Welcome back. Well, a new study conducted by two academics from the University of Copenhagen found that rhino horn consumers reveal why illegal trade alone won't save the rhinos. So demand for rhino horn in Asian markets has pushed the remaining rhino populations to the brink of extinction. The remaining rhino populations in Africa and Asia are steadily declining. So for more on this now, we're joined by Dr. Joe Shaw from the WWF South Africa uh, for this conversation. Dr. Joe, thank you so much for your time uh, this morning. I mean, you're speaking about how legalizing or making the trade of rhino horn legal will not necessarily save the rhinos. How so? Thanks. Thanks. So, I mean, this, this research from the University of Copenhagen provides us with um, some really important understanding to guide our decisions about policies for rhino conservation. It's important to understand the root of the problem, where demand is coming from, and what the decision-making processes are of rhino horn consumers. It, it's not just one simple demand. Um, different people want to use different horn for different reasons and are willing to pay different prices for it. So this research spoke to um, existing and future rhino horn consumers in Hanoi, in Vietnam, to find out how the legality of horn, what its source is, um, how much it cost, would influence what they were prepared to, to pay for the horn and whether they'd buy it or not. And I think one of their key findings is that the consumers were willing to pay more for wild rhino horn than what they perceived as farmed rhino horn. Um, they, it, it's felt to be more potent because uh, wild horns have more medical efficiency, efficacy because they're, the, the animals browsing are exposed to, um, to natural plants in the wild. And, and this is actually something that we've seen for other traditional Asian medicine products, this split between um, willingness to, to purchase more, a preference for the wild versus a, a farmed product. Absolutely. I'm wondering, Doc, if this doesn't have to do also with the kind of messaging and the perception that exists out there that there's actual value in rhino horn. I wonder if enough is being done by government and related stakeholders to change that perception uh, so we can save the few rhino that we have left. Yes, I think, I think this is a, a key point. Rhino horn is used in traditional Asian medicine to, to cleanse and cool the body, um, although there's no evidence that that actually works. And another interesting finding from this study is that um, if, if rhino horn consumers ask their peers, ask their colleagues whether they'd find the horn effective or not, uh, people responding, if, if, if their friend said, no, I, I tried that stuff and it didn't work, reduce the likelihood that they buy again. So when we're, when we're trying to influence consumers and people buying things, we have to do it in a really targeted way that speaks to, um, speaks to the, the reasons why they're doing things. So just saying, um, so a poster from somebody like me saying rhino horn doesn't work wouldn't be as effective as asking your friend and them saying, I, I spent a lot of money this, on this stuff and it didn't do anything. Sure. So then in that uh, instance, maybe you should just bring us into your confidence there, uh, Joe. How in danger are the rhinos at this particular context? If you and I are having a conversation in 2022 and we're looking at the state of our rhinos, what is it looking like? So uh, as always with rhinos, I can't give you a simple, straightforward answer to that. It's a really complex challenge we're facing here. Um, demand coming from different places in Asia different populations in Africa under different levels of pressure. But I think it's really key to note this problem hasn't gone away. We don't, rhinos aren't front page news that, like they used to be. We're, you know, it's not front of mind for people anymore. But you look in the press before Christmas, there was a, a significant poaching wave. And a lot of our parks are still under huge pressure, despite great efforts from people on the ground. So we really need to to acknowledge um, the organized crime nature of wildlife trafficking and particular rhino, particularly rhino horn, and, and the need to bring um, a sophisticated uh, multi-agency law enforcement response to addressing this challenge. Absolutely. Very interesting insights there. Dr. Joe Shaw from the WWF South Africa, thank you very much for your time.